Mongolia once ruled the world's biggest land empire stretching from Asia to Europe. Even at the height of their empire, they live close to nature and far from comfort. Hey designers, in this video we're going to create a documentary style map animation in After Effects, completely without any plugins, no paid tools, no extra downloads. Everything we'll be doing is built right into After Effects. So even if you're a beginner, don't worry, you'll be able to follow along easily. Let's get started. First, I'll create a new composition. I'm going with 1920 by 1080 pixels, and then I'll press OK. Next, I'll import the world map image. Don't worry, I'll share a download link for all the images I'm using in this tutorial. Just check the description if you want to follow along and practice. I'll drag and drop the map onto the timeline. As you can see, it's a pretty large image. So I'll press S to bring up the scale, and scale it down until it fits nicely on the canvas. All right, now move the playhead to the two second mark. We want the animation to start after two seconds because before that, we'll be showing some text and other intro elements. With the playhead at two seconds, press S for scale and click the stopwatch to set a keyframe. Then press Shift plus P for position and Shift plus R for rotation. Click the stopwatch for both of those as well. Move the playhead a few seconds forward, around the six second mark. At this point, scale the map up a bit and adjust its position. We want to zoom into a specific area, like the Mongolian region, since that's our focus. Also, rotate it slightly to make the movement feel more dynamic. And there you go. You've got a nice zoom and pan animation. Close all the properties to keep things clean. Select the map layer and press Ctrl plus D to duplicate it. Go to the Effects and Presets panel and search for Lumetri Color. Drag it onto the lower layer. We'll use this to darken the background. Just lower the exposure a bit so that it looks faded compared to the top layer. With the duplicate map layer selected, Grab the pen tool and draw a shape around the area you want to highlight. Since this layer is selected, the shape you draw will automatically become a mask. Just focus on the part of the map that you want to emphasize. In my case, I'm highlighting the Mongolian region, the area where the Mongols were spread during their early expansion. So I'm going to draw a rough selection around that zone. Once you're done, after Effects will automatically create a mask on that layer. On this duplicate layer, go ahead and apply Lumetri Color again. We'll make a few more adjustments here, mainly increase the contrast to make the area stand out more. With this same layer selected, go to the search bar and type in Mask to quickly bring up the mask properties. Increase the feather value. We don't want the edges to look too sharp. Just a nice soft fade so it blends naturally and looks more visually appealing. Next, select the Mask Path option and press Ctrl plus C on your keyboard. This will copy the shape of the mask we just created. We're going to use this path for a shape layer next. Before that, let's just preview what we've done so far. You can see the camera movement and the masked region. It's looking great. Move your playhead back to the first frame. The shortcut to jump to the beginning is the home key on your keyboard. This time, take the pen tool again, but make sure no layer is selected. Just click anywhere in the composition to create a simple point. Press Ctrl plus V to paste the mask path we copied earlier. It will paste that same shape onto a brand new shape layer. Only one thing, You'll probably notice the shape is too large. That's okay. Just scale it down to match the original area, adjust it until it fits perfectly. 
We're going to parent this new shape layer to the duplicated map layer so that it follows all its movements. To do this, select the shape layer, look for the parent and link section. If you can't see it, press F4 on your keyboard to toggle the layer switches. Once you see the pick whip icon next to your shape layer, drag it and drop it onto the duplicated map layer. Now, any animation or movement we do on the map will automatically apply to this shape layer too. Let's go ahead and preview the animation to see if it needs any changes or adjustments. We only want the duplicated map and the shape layer to appear after the two second mark. Before that, it should just be the darker, original map in the background. So move your bar indicator to the two second mark. Select both the shape layer and the duplicated map, then press Alt plus open bracket on your keyboard. This will trim the layers from that point so they don't show up before two seconds. Let's preview. The transition feels a bit too quick. We want it to feel smoother and more cinematic. So let's add an opacity animation. Start by selecting both layers again and pressing T to bring up the opacity. Click the stopwatch to add a keyframe where the layers begin. Then move the bar indicator a few frames forward and add another keyframe. This time, go back to the first keyframe and set the opacity to zero. Let's preview that. It's a bit better, but still feels a little too sudden. So what we'll do is untrim the beginning a bit. Bring both layers slightly earlier, maybe around the one second mark, or just before. Then slide the first opacity keyframe back a little so the fade in is much smoother. That's looking way better. If you want the fade to be even softer, select both opacity keyframes, hold Alt, and drag the second keyframe a bit further to the right. This controls the speed of the fade. Again, this part is totally based on your style. You can tweak it however you like. Once you're happy with the timing, we'll move on to animating the stroke on the shape layer. So select shape layer one, open up the contents, then go into shape one, stroke one. Here, you can start customizing the stroke style. First, change the stroke color. Next, increase the stroke width a bit so it stands out more. Also change the line cap to round cap. Let's make it a dashed line. Click the plus icon next to dashes and then increase the value until you're happy with the look. You can adjust both dash and gap lengths to fine tune it. I'm going to slightly reduce the stroke width again to balance it out. Go ahead and close the contents properties of the shape layer to keep things tidy. Click on the add button next to it and choose trim paths from the dropdown. Once trim paths is added, open it up. Click on the stopwatch next to start Move the bar indicator a few frames forward and create a second keyframe by clicking the diamond icon. After that, move the bar indicator back to the first keyframe and change the start value to 100% so it animates from 100% to 0%, basically drawing the stroke from nothing. Preview it. Okay, great. Go back to that first frame of the trim paths animation and now click the stopwatch next to offset to activate it. Then move the bar indicator to the second keyframe and increase the offset value to create a nice flowing motion along the stroke. Let's preview. Close the shape layer properties so we can focus on placement. Let's say we want the stroke animation to happen around the two second mark, maybe slightly after the map has faded in. To do that, Select Shape Layer 1 and press U on your keyboard. Select all of the Trim Paths keyframes, both Start and Offset, and drag them together so they start right at the two-second mark. To slow down the animation a bit more, select the second keyframes of both Trim Paths and Offset and drag them to around the five-second or six-second mark, whichever feels right for your animation flow. After that, also select Shape Layer 1 and the Duplicated Map Layer, then press Shift plus T to reveal their opacity keyframes. You'll see two keyframes again. Move the second keyframe here to the same point, either at the 5 second or 6 second mark, just to make the opacity fade in slower and match the stroke animation speed.
Yeah, this is looking much better. Slower, smoother, and more cinematic. Okay, now move the bar indicator to around the six second mark or wherever you want the next scene to begin. This is where we'll import two pictures to add a new layer of visual storytelling. Drag and drop your two pictures onto the timeline. You'll notice they appear huge on the screen. That's totally normal. Press S to bring up the scale property and scale them down to a size that fits nicely on the map. Use the selection tool to adjust their positioning wherever you want them to appear. Once their scale and positions are set and they look balanced on screen, we'll add a little visual enhancement. Select one of the pictures, go to Effects and Presets, and search for Drop Shadow. Drag and drop the Drop Shadow effect onto the image. Set Opacity to 100%, increase the distance, and adjust the softness a bit so the shadow looks smooth. Also, tweak the direction of the shadow based on the light source you want. Next, in the same way, go back to Effects and Presets and search for Glow. Apply Glow on the same picture. This adds a bit of pop and helps the image stand out more. Again, move the bar indicator to around the 6 second mark. This is where we're going to animate the entry of the image using the CC Page Turn effect. Select the image layer you've been working on, go to Effects and Presets, search for CC Page Turn, and drag it onto that image. At first, the effect might look a bit strange, like it's not applying properly. That's because Page Turn is sitting under the other effects like Glow and Drop Shadow. To fix this, reorder the effects. Move CC Page. Turn to the top of the Effects stack in the Effect Controls panel. That way, the Page Turn animation includes all the effects together. Drop Shadow, Glow, and the image itself. At this frame, click the stopwatch next to Fold Position to create a keyframe. Then move the Fold Position point, you'll see a small circle or handle, and drag it upward or to the side, wherever you want the page to start folding from. Press U on your keyboard to reveal the keyframes of the image with the CC Page Turn effect. Move the bar indicator a few frames forward and drag that small fold point downward. This will make the page turn continue smoothly downward. Next, we're going to trim this layer so that it starts exactly from where the page turn animation begins. Move your bar indicator to that point and press Alt plus left square bracket. This trims the beginning of the layer, so it only starts where the animation starts. Now, copy both of the page turn keyframes by selecting them and pressing Ctrl plus C. Go to the second image layer, select it, press Ctrl plus V to paste the keyframes. The same animation now applies to the second image. Again, trim this second image layer as well. Make sure the bar indicator is at the point where the animation starts, and press Alt plus left bracket to trim it from that point. You'll notice that again something weird happens. Just like before, the CC page turn effect is not working as expected on the second image. That's because the effect is still under the drop shadow and glow effects. So, simply drag the CC page turn effect above all the other effects in the effect controls panel. That fixes the issue. It's time to add the final touch, which is the text. Select the text tool from the toolbar, click inside your composition, and type your text. Use the align panel to center it both vertically and horizontally in the comp. Change the font. I'm using a font called Wiener Hand. Adjust the color of the text. 
I'm giving it a mustard yellow color. Let's give this text some effects. Select the text layer, go to Effects and Presets, search for Drop Shadow, and apply it to the text. Set the opacity to 100%, increase the distance, and adjust the softness to your liking. Next, right-click on the text layer, go to Layer Styles, and choose Stroke. Expand the Stroke options. Change the stroke color to a bluish tone. You can even use the eyedropper tool to pick a color directly from the map. Looks good. We're going to apply a final overlay effect to enhance the visual. I've downloaded a video overlay from VDZ. It's an ink splash effect. I'll share the download link in the video description. Play it once to get a feel of the effect. Move the bar indicator to around the 2 second mark and press S to reveal the scale property. Click on the stopwatch next to scale, move the bar indicator back to the first frame, and add a blank keyframe. Then move the bar indicator to the last frame of the ink splash and increase the scale value. We want the splash to grow and fill the screen as it animates. At this point, we'll trim the ink splash layer to finish neatly. So increase the scale first and press Alt plus right square bracket to trim the end of this overlay video. Okay, now let's change the blending mode of the overlay layer. We're going to switch it to Linear Burn. This will blend the ink splash with the background in a more dynamic way. Next, we're going to invert the colors of this layer. With the overlay layer selected, go to the Effects and Presets panel, search for Invert, and apply it. You'll notice the colors are reversed. It's looking good, but there's one thing we need to fix. You can probably see that the animation for the stroke and the page turn is starting too early in the timeline. We don't want that. We want these effects to start a few frames later, so let's adjust their timing. First, select all the layers except the overlay video and the text layer. Press U to reveal their keyframes. You can expand the timeline area a bit to make it easier to work. Now, with those layers selected, move all of their keyframes to the right, just a bit, so their animations start later. Then, select only the original map layer and move its keyframes slightly as well. But don't move the actual layer, just the keyframes. This is important because we still want the map to be visible underneath when the text animation happens. We just don't want its animation to start right away. Once everything's adjusted, collapse all the properties so your timeline stays clean. Let's review the whole animation one last time to see if everything looks right. At this point, Right when the Mongolia text appears, we want the text to stay for about 2 seconds and a few frames, and then fade out. So, select the text layer, press T to reveal opacity, and click the stopwatch to create a keyframe. Move the bar indicator a few frames forward and set the opacity to 0. Preview the animation again, and if needed, adjust the opacity keyframes so the fade out looks smooth and happens at just the right time. Okay, I think this is the best. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please like it, comment below, and don't forget to subscribe to Ace Designs for more awesome content like this. Mongolia once ruled the world's biggest land empire stretching from Asia to Europe. Even at the height of their empire, they live close to nature and far from comfort.